this is about my chain and a few little bits as you could see yesterday I was out I was out yesterday and I was out uh, riding with our Tom and my chain has just keeps on coming loose now now there's a couple of things these are tight so in effect it shouldn't move but what it is it's the bolt on here which is this which the outer diameter is 27 mil on it so i've got 27 mil ratchet to release it and on the other side it's a 22 now there is I'm going to look for new new bolts now there is a stainless steel bolt that you can get and there's a2 a4 and i think there's a8 as well so the higher up the a schedule they go the the more hardened they are the better they are so my concern now is to tighten this up now even i'm looking at i've always i've generally always set my chain on the stand and maybe I'm doing it wrong because uh, when you look here I think it's possibly the bike's got meant to be flat on the floor which means I'll have to line it up straight so what I'm going to do first I'm going to take these off I'm going to clean them because there's also another side I want to do I want to clean all this up and mark it but on the back here when I was out with Tom you can see he's put a little piece of plastic in there so i'm going to take off the this uh the pyramid uh hugger and take off these bits clean it up get to the shocker clean that up a bit and i'm gonna make a piece to fit in there so i think what we'll do we'll, we'll start with that first we'll start with taking all these bits off and then going from there so the easiest way the way I always do things is I have actually got an impact wrench I'm going to start with the footrest because it's out of the way Take off the chain guard, which then gives you two things as well. The chain guard comes off, you can clean it inside, and then you can actually have a good look. You've got a better view on everything that's going on, and you can see there. You can see the rust on that that uh, shocker now. When I looked at Tom's, even though Tom's Tom's is the same same year as mine, even though it's the same year, he uses an AC50, and, and I, I admit it, mine gets used every day. But looking at the chain, you generally, as well, with a good chain, I was talking about this, when you get a good chain it doesn't hold steady all the way up it drops or the links drop on these chains if you lift it at a point you can see it just stays straight which means the links are a little bit they're not as good as like a really good quality dip chain so i'm going to tighten these up and i'm probably going to look for a new one now the next thing i need to do i need to take off the pyramid uh, the pyramid sorry about the filming this works on this it's dead simple 
you look inside there can you see that cable tie there that's how these are held on so you just get your pair of snips actually work there we go that's a better way of seeing it you can see it now yeah so we need to get inside there and get that off and it'll probably, probably do good to be honest this hasn't been off since I, uh, I fitted it and to be fair it should give me uh, good access And there it is, it just comes out. So you just get a large cable tie. And that goes through there like that. And again, it's a stage now. You can take it all off and you can clean it. And now we can actually get to the back here. And look at it. Yeah. So it's it's good preventative maintenance really. You know, it is it is good to actually do stuff on your bike. Let's just see if that can just be kind to me, right? I don't want it in your face. There we go. Don't you just love the professionalism of the uh, the filming? It's like I say, the hardest bit is actually doing this for you so you can see it. Now these are parts that you just don't get to on the bike. People, once you've put them in place, you, do, you just leave them, don't you? And these are the parts that actually rust. two things you can either do hammerite it because hammerite will definitely uh, do it I'm going to just spray a bit AC19 there which is like a lubricant and that's just really as part of a cleaner to clean it and you can see then how bad your bike is so really to do this really well I should really drop the shocker but you can see now you can see the rust in there and the rust around there So for me, the next easiest trick for me to do is to and go from there. So now the next thing, a sip of lemon water because I'm on a diet. Tom destroyed my diet yesterday, thank you Tom. Forcing me to eat that egg and bacon sandwich. So I'm on some nice lemon water for people. with a bit of ginger in there so now I want to protect that even more and what a lot of people do and what I've seen Tom do he just put a piece of plastic in here a piece of bin lid in there so basically I want the same let's just get that screwdriver and get it in and get a rough idea Am I going to have enough space on that? So this is an old uh, piece of plastic that you get your takeaways in. I want to start with that. So I'm going to start with a 
can you down there? And I'll cut it. Which is, you know, what you generally need to do, isn't it? You do need to cut them. Because if you don't cut them, you're not going to get anywhere. Try not to cut towards yourself. You may just slice yourself open. So, see, I haven't nicked my uh, neighbour's toolbox and nicked, cut his lid up on him. So, Tom, you know, this is the way you should have done it, you know. Your own piece of plastic. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, what, what you want to use that for? Don't know. Film camera or anything like that? Who knows? So that's the, this is the start of it. And I'll tell you what, I am so impressed with this uh, rubber flooring that I bought in it. Right. So this is what I want it to do. I want it to go into there. Now I can do it either way, I can do it that way. Or we can do it that way. And do you know something? I think I'd prefer it that way. Now what you've just got to watch at, as you can see there, that's in. That is going to get in the way of the chain guard. Sorry. So I do that. And that sits outside of there. Like that. Right, so now what we want to do is check where the fit is. Where it goes to, and that'll do nice. Right, so that. Right. So we know the way. We know where it needs to go. I know this looks dead fiddly and dead thingy, but. It's probably dead easy. Now I need, I'm gonna come back to you. Now people, I'm just gonna make it a lot easier for myself. Because trying to work inside that little space ain't gonna work. So I'm just gonna take off the back wheel. So, I think we all know how to take off a back wheel. But if you don't, a 22 on this side, and a 27 on the other. over your wheel and it should take a little bit of pressure off that like that allowing you to pull pull it out there we go so just take it out now remember when you're taking it out you want to break this on one side so Take your chain off, just gently stick it over the side there like that, and your wheel should just slide out. Now normally when you're at, when your back piece here will get in the way in some cases, right there, when it's trying to come out, you can just, if you turn it, you'll get it out, and there we go. Push your wheel out. So now what this does, it just gives me a lot more space now to do what I need to do inside here and to see more, you know, I'm trying to put the lights that way, it's good for you, but unfortunately it's not good for me, uh, that may do it, uh, right, 
So now with what I've done here, it now gives me that. You know, you can see more, you can get out more stuff now. Like watching you uh, mites fall over the shelf. Don't you just love doing YouTube? Don't you just love it? Right. So now I can see, which is really good. Everything in here, that's not bad. I mean, like I say, you don't have to do this. This is a bit OCD. Th this here is where my hug has been rubbing on it. So, like, to I was talking to Tom yesterday. It was a really good idea what he does. So he's put some really thick tape before he put put his uh, plastic piece on there to stop it to stop that happening. Because if I'd have uh, put something on it. You probably wouldn't have wore it away to be honest. Because even though it's fastened just with uh with that cable tie it's still moving. There we go. But I mean it's not gonna rot that's not gonna rot through. That is not gonna rot through that that at all. wire brush just taking it down a bit and what we're going to do now take you in there a little bit closer bit of uh, I'm just going to uh, put some isopropyl paint on I'm just going to clean it off there uh, because don't try painting over really even like this Put that primer on there. Put a bit of primer on it to uh, to cure it. But I'm gonna get a little paintbrush, all bits and pieces I've had for many years. Bit of hammer on it, and all it's to do is to cover that rust. To stop it getting any worse, that's all it's for. Which, you know, while you're here, you might as well do it. To be quite honest with you, you'd be daft not to. And Hammerite, I've got to say, Hammerite is probably one of the best paints to prevent rust I mean like I say I'm not bothered that it's not colour coded it's not matched because all of that's going to do as you can see it's just going to stop it getting worse and this is smooth this one there's two, two different types right so that's that bit I need to really clean off that brush because when you uh, do a brush in hammerite it's dead once that dries that stuff you're not getting that off Oopah. so I know roughly where it's going no 
you know, it's all as it is is preventative maintenance. It's just something, you know, I should have done a long time ago, but you, know, you, just, you just don't because it's like I do ride on the bike. I just get on the bike and ride it, but when you get to this point where the chain needs to be on, that needs to be done for the time it's going to take you to do this, you might as well just do it. And guess what? When you do this, the back of there is going to be. The back of there then is going to be sorted right little tiny fixing screws so again they don't have to be massive because there's not so I'm putting little black headed screws in easy to actually <laughs> take off and do again so just put in a couple of a couple of turns more because it'll also line it up for me this is the, the pain, pain when you're actually doing this bang on so the other thing you can do on it don't have to it'll come off but we've got somewhere and I'll just put the piece of electrical tape across there and what that'll do just cover the heads on the screws I mean like I say that'll come off and it's not that hard to actually fasten so now any muck that's been thrown up now, that should help it. You better rust around there. All right, it's not perfect, but it's gone. And now we can get inside here and we can start looking at the chain, line that up and get that right at these places to see what's going on. And underneath here, you've got uh, on the DCT and on the DCT version of the Honda you've got the, the handbrake and there's a handbrake in between that little spring so I'm making sure that's lubricated and clean you can see that you can get at where you need to get at you can actually see now I can see my brake fluid on the back now I can see there now that is low so that's another case of looking at that and tidying them up so this this is what happens as you start start maintaining your bike and you do stuff like this you'll start seeing other things and you know and they are important you now even the the bolts on here you can see them now now I believe that AC ACF 50 is supposed to be really good for that because what it allegedly does is removes uh, corrosive metals on top of a metal so it actually uh, cures it never used it so i don't know so i'll try it so now on to just tidying these bit bits at the back look at these brake pads inside leg a quick wipe over again not nothing that you have to do that's what i like to do chain goes up and builds up all gunk and junk when you got the wheel off you know it's like especially if you're going to keep your bike for a long time 
you know, if, if your bike is going to be with you, you bought that bike and you're going to keep it. Doing this, you're going to have a bike that one, you know when you're going out on it, when you're riding it, it's going to be bang on, it's going to be safe. But two, you're also going to have a bike that, you know, it will add value to it. It will, it, you know, you will get more for it by maintenance like this than not doing it. If you look after your bike, the bike will return you more. You go, it's like you go to a dealer, you go to someone private. If they go to a bike that's spotless with 20,000 miles on and they go to one that's got dings and cracks and wax all over it, and there's 100 quid difference between them, you know what you're going to buy. You know, unless you want to restore it. Now again, now this is another example inside here. So that's where your chain's been grabbing in and getting all the junk. So again, this is just, this is built up oil now, this inside here. So just give it a scrape. In fact, what I'm gonna do with this because I don't want it all over my floor. Follow me. To the cleaning bath, which is basically just a bit of uh, diesel and petrol. So I'm just gonna pull that out there. We're gonna get a brush. In fact, I should have one somewhere. Should keep all these in one place. There we go. And I'm just going to uh, just going to take that down there. And the diesel will break that off. And it'll go into it. You know, it is worth doing this. I know it, I know it's, you know, I'm going on a bit, but it, it really is worth doing it. it. Takes a few minutes, you know, and really once a year go over it because generally my bikes I'll give once a year I will give them a full a proper detailing I'll go over them properly I'll clean them or wash them it's like all the videos on washing your bikes putting your snow foam, snow foam. you're only doing the exterior of it no matter what bike what you can see you're only doing what you can see if you're going to do your bike really once a year take the panels off and start going through the panels from underneath get to the frame because I'm not being funny the plastics on a bike, the aesthetics, you know, that's all they are. So when they're pretty, it's great when they're pretty, and it, like you say, you get more money, but if you want to really maintain it, go like this, go right beyond, go underneath, go into the bike, and there we go, you can see now, you can actually see the actual labels on it. And it, it's not so long, is it? And it's like here now. So I know it's a bit of a long run, like all my videos are, I'm a bit, I don't know, maybe find them tedious, but, you know, tr I, this is the way I'll do things, you know, when I start, it's like that with Tom, when I, I seen with, uh, with Tom, when he put that there, I've seen it done before, but never bothered, but when you actually sit down and then you look at a bike and you look at someone who's done it, and you see the difference in a bike of the same age, what their shock is like and what their, you know, what their bike and what their, their parts are like, then you go, well, they're doing it right. I need to improve it. And, you know, and that's what education is. You know, stuff like this, this is, what the, it does help whether you're this, whether you're that bothered to do that. Don't know. You know, because even if you're going to garage, you, you, you're never going to get stuff like this done. So now, that is now 
just like new again. And diesel and petrol people, so more percentage of diesel than petrol, you know, like one cap full of petrol and uh, two cups of diesel is roughly what I use to do this sort of thing. So there we go, let's follow me, follow me. So now we're back to putting the the wheel will go on mine. The back somehow, as as you can see, has crept away. So I'm just gonna cut it. Absolutely fabulous recording this. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna cut that little bit off there, somewhere to put it. broken bits now again back to the old clean cleaning scenario I'm just gonna give it a clean because there's loads of dust underneath there it's ready to go back in there we'll see how that looks right back onto the floor people don't aren't you loving this this is a this is one long winded uh, Horrible people, it's horrible. I remember the anguish when I put it on the first time round. Bloody awful idea. And it's getting at it. Uh, it's a fascinating place. That'll do me for now, that'll do my, my ambitions for it. So, now any money, when we come to actually uh, put our little plate back on. Just can't get at it. It's so tight in here, it's untrue. Is it going to behave, people? Is this going to let me do what I need to do? Now, can I get the screwdriver in? So now, for all this grief, just to put that in there, because of Tom, We now have something that is. We've got the hugger on, and we've also got the. Uh, we've got the piece of plastic, which is now totally protected that uh, back shocker. Right, so let's get on to the next thing. 
because we noticed the actual brakes need doing so I'm gonna turn you off there right moving on now we're gonna move on to putting the uh, back wheel on and again really what I should do we should clean up this wheel before I put it in uh, because look at the state of that wheel people so I think what well, I'm just gonna give it I'm just gonna give it clean before I put it back in so I'll be back to you shortly now back wheel of the NC it's a bit more tricky than uh, your standard one because you've also got low back brake to put in place so you've got the handbrake to line up it's just lining the little shit up that's the problem with the MC it's going to be some editing to do this I tell you it just ain't fun doing this to be honest and I need to I'd like to to see where that is lining up I need to, on that side to see where it's lining up there and that's all the other thing I'm going to do I'm going to put a bit of tape on that. I'm just putting a bit of tape on that. That's to stop it sliding back and forth. So it's worth just doing that on them because otherwise we'll just do that, we just want to keep them falling out on you. So we'll just, it's only to hold them in place. Can line them up afterwards. Let's just get that there. A bit there, a bit there. And that's all it's for, it's just to line that up so that can see where I'm going. Now I'm looking on this side to see how far out I am on the wheel. We're a fair bit. We're a fair bit, old people. Once you've got one bit in, you've got help, you've got hope. Now it doesn't matter from this side if you knock it in, just make sure it's fairly le fairly even. Don't try and start slamming the other side in when it's at an angle. You know, feel it. You should when you knock it in, you can tap it in on, on that bolt, but just make sure the wheel is you know there's not a lot of resistance on that that bolt that's going through there when it goes through okay, you, can, you can feel that there now and now There we go. 
So we're through there, we're through there. Now, the thing that a lot of people do on this side as well, they put grease on here, and you really don't want to put grease on there, because that's what will loosen it. If anything, put a, a tiny bit of Loctite. I now need, to be honest, a new nut. So I need to now look at uh, buying a couple of new nuts, and I've probably got nylon nuts to, as well. I'd rather, to be honest, it's like there, I don't know whether I've got a spring washer. Probably got a spring washer. Let me see if we've got a spring washer. Well, not for love nor money can I find my spring washers, and I know I've got a big box of them somewhere. So the main thing now is they need to tighten up anyway. So the other side to look at is when you're doing this is one. Let's go round to the the chain. The chain on this should be let's just pull it up for you. There should be a thirty mil leeway from here to here. So when you measure it from the centre, from your, your tight spot. Now I, it's like when I was out with Tom yesterday as well, he marks his tight spots. I've never done that, so quite a good idea. So that's another thing that, you know, you learn off people. So now I need to start working on loosening these bolts and pulling it back. And when we do that, we also need to double check that it's going in straight for you to see this now we're just going to clean that a bit more and what we're going to start off with doing we're going to loosen the back nut on them. So we'll do it on both of them. So I'll just leave, take that off. Now, on the front nut, this is the one that's gonna spin it round. This is one that's gonna push this forward. If you watch it, Can you see them? Can you see it moving? Pulling it back, so not forward. And you can see the chain as it's been moved. Now, because the chain's so loose, I want to know which one it's at. So, one large one. And it's on the third one there. So let's go to the other side. Let's see what that's showing on this side here. Let's bring a bit of light round. So we've got a small one on here. Now, if you look at that, that small one is too far forward. So let's just undo that. A little bit more. 
so it's more okay so that now is the same as the other side so let's go back to the chain and now let's look at the chain there's still far too much movement so now again we're gonna see how much further forward we can take it And when these go too far, it means your, your chain is stretched, basically. Now, the other side is, can you see we're in the red? And we don't want to be in the red on that chain. So that's telling me that chain has stretched. Uh, right, so we want to do it 30, 30 mils, basically. So we're looking for the tight spot. So let's just put that to 150 there. Bring up to the tight spot. And you work off the link, by the way. Don't look off the top of the chain, work off the link. So where the link is, go up to 150. I'll get you to a point where there it's at. See so at the let's just do it there so it's at 110 okay so we want a 10 20 30 so that's right now what I need to check is I'm doing this with the actual uh, wheel off the ground free so and I've always done it that way so I'm gonna ask Honda because I was looking online I can't see it online a lot of bikes do it with it with the actual wheel flat on the floor so you've got the weight on the bike which makes sense because when i when i sat on this bike that will push down and tighten the chain i would have thought uh, so that i'm happy with so we'll just double check now so we're looking at that mark there it's just in between the green and the red we've got A gap there, my calipers are built, but that gap there between one, two, and three, so it's another one in effect on that side. So let's check what this is doing is checking for alignment on the wheel now. So we're moving round. And to me that's not aligned. That wheel isn't straight. Let's just put it around. That wheel is definitely not straight. And this is where you've got the this is where it gets a lot of people. Do you see there now? See that gap? It's right up tight. So it's there on the other side. Now the other side is line it up look at your wheel look how it is look at your chain look down it try and get down low try and get a bit of light on there and look if you chain straight because you will see and you will hear You know, you will hear it. Now there's, there's, there's things that you can use, there's line, alignment levels and things like that. So, now, just gently bring that up to the bolt. Don't turn it, because if you turn it while this bolt's loose, well, it's too loose, you will actually, you can see there, you'll push it forward. So now, what I'm just going to do, 
is I'm just gonna for now nip up these until I put my torque wrench on it. And you can see not lots of you can see not lots of, of uh, tension on that. Well, let's just go back again, just check. The, you know the secret with things like this is just keep and checking it. Make sure you are right on it. Because the last thing you want to do is just put the chain on, go to them marks, sign it up and think that you're straight. So now I don't want that to move any further. So we fasten this one up. And the back one locks the front one. And this is the, the piece that keeps that plate in place. people will go it's madness but I tend to do that or oh, that's so correct and do that behind so that is now my NC750 DCT a bit of workshop work on it So I'm quite pleased now. So we've now got my hugger back on. We've got my little piece to stop the uh, mud getting in even further. We've got all the chains been redone. Now I'll just double check the chain. You know, that's again, run it and just double check it. That's right. So now I'll just finish off putting these bolts in and we're done. Bertrand Bike, hope, hope you've enjoyed anyway, it's like I say, that's the way I do it, I'm not saying it's the absolute correct way, I'm not saying it's the best in the world, other people may do it different ways, uh, but the main thing is, you know, look after it, look after your bike and do it correctly, because if you do that it's going to last so I know now when I go back out with our Tom, I'm going to be safe. My bike's going to be okay. I'm not going to get as much mud in the back there. And go from there. Right. Birchwood Biker, thanks for watching. Ride safe, be kind to others. And with luck, they will be kind to you. See you on the next one.